All right, what up, my ninjas? This is Strident, and uh, I am back with another video. This time, I'm kind of unhappy. Um, I uh, recently, my brother called me this morning to let me know that they canceled Static, and we were both afraid that this was going to happen. I mentioned it in my racism uh, vid, racism and co racism in comics, and you know, film vid, and. Uh, we figured this was going to happen because this is typically the treatment with most uh, non, uh, I don't know, most non-white superhero characters. Um, they get the, the crack at having a book where they're headliners, but then they cancel the book shortly after the book starts. I mean, they did this with several Blade titles. They did this with uh, War Machine titles. They've done this with... Uh, uh, Steel, they've done this with uh, Mr. Terrific, and the list goes on and on and on. But now we come back to, um, not to mention they did this with the entire Milestone universe. It was successful for several years, and then they said, let's kill the whole thing. Anyway, so New 52 comes up. We have a new static book. The new static book was, uh, it was pretty cool. In the beginning, you know, you see uh, Virgil with a new costume and everything. And I'm just going to clarify that I'm not a big fan of Static. I just dug the fact that they had a character who was kind of the everyman stereotype for brown skin characters, you know, for minority superheroes. And, you know, he fit that bill, you know, even though I didn't, I wasn't hardcore into his book. I was more of an icon and, uh, rocket slash um hardware type of reader um it was still cool to have him but anyway so we have the new 52 the two headlining black books were static and mr terrific mr terrific's book sucks because he has no personality they tried to make him into a black bruce wayne and you know we already got bruce wayne so it's not very fun you know and he's even more bland than the Bruce Wayne personality sometimes can be, depending on who's writing it. Um, Virgil, on the other hand, or Static, his book just seemed so generic. You know? It seemed like they were foregoing story for the sake of action in on every panel, you know? And weird things were happening. He's fighting Power Ranger-looking characters. Um, everything is all mangled up to some degree, and it just didn't seem like the same. It didn't even seem like an extension of the Static Universe that we were given a glimpse at in the 90s with his book, and then in early 2000 with his TV series. So anyway, um, I think they are on... What issue were they on? It had to be like 8. So, issue 8, after issue 8, they're done. The series is been canceled um pretty much uh jo john rosam was the writer and uh he was a good friend of Dwayne mcduffie and he also wrote several um little issues here and there with static on uh, uh, milestone while he was part of milestone um he was asked to come on as writer for static and you know it was mainly because he had worked closely with Dwayne McDuffie before, and he understood what McDuffie was trying to achieve with the character. He also enjoyed the character and saw that this would be an opportunity to bring this, I don't know, B, C list character into mainstream status, you know? And then also slowly use this as a gateway book to bring other Wildstorm characters back into the mainstream. Anyway, uh, people that he was working alongside uh you know on this project which include uh scott mcdaniel and harvey richards was the editor they were kind of like the the force that benched and stopped this guy so he's brought on to be the writer but you have scott mcdaniel who's an artist writer telling him what works and what doesn't work and how to write and then you have harvey richards backing everything that uh, McDaniel says, which puts the uh, writer in a strange position. He's no longer the writer. He's just a bystander. And, you know, if you know the industry at all, if you know any freelance industry, when you're brought on to do something, that's the typical thing or the typical way things work. 
you do what you are paid to do in some way, shape, or form. You don't sit and get paid to stand, you know, stand by and watch other people do their job. Sometimes if, if that happens, it's a good thing because that means you get a paycheck for an easy job. But I mean, if you're passionate about the project, then that sucks and that's not where you want to be. And that was the case here. And pretty much, you know, this seemed to happen since the first issue. And Homeboy's like, dude, when am I going to get to do what I need to do? And they fired him. Now, I don't know, I don't know what uh, Mr. Rosen looks like. Um, and, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to say that the, the guys themselves are racist towards one another, but I'm definitely saying that the treatment of this character falls under the same uh, umbrella of, uh, you know, the topic I had before about the racist treatment of, you know, minority characters in comics and film based on comics and just, you know, in film in general. Um, it's, it's annoying that you finally have a character that could kind of flip the script on this subject and then instead of using that as an opportunity to further you know the the further fight the you know the the terrible stereotyping that's been going on and further you know s serve as an example of you know the betterment of this situation they take them and they use them as a straight up example of exactly what I've been complaining about and exactly what I'm fighting against, and a lot of people are fighting against, you know? Um, there's no reason why they couldn't use this as a fresh start and a, a, an example of, or a time to redo all the goodness that was done the first time, just put a modern twist on it, and then add in little bits of pieces to help stitch Static into the DC Universe proper, not to be something that's in its own pocket dimension next to the DC universe. You feel what I'm saying? And this is what they always do with these characters, and it sucks, you know? You finally have a character that was getting out of the street level stuff and kind of uh, ascending, you know? Getting up there where he's dealing with more super powered threats that could be threats to the world at large, not just his block, you know? And they fucked it up, and they made it even worse. And, uh, now they did it to death. The fucking book is done. Now, you know, this sucks on several standpoints. Like, my brother's a fan of this book. He's a fan of the character, actually. I shouldn't say the book. And he was hoping that the book would actually do the things that, you know, Razum was talking about. He mentioned that the things that he's responsible for are the creation of the Pale Man. Homeboy's kind of like a... Uh, a Joker-ish kind of character. He was exposed to Joker's toxins, uh, probably like a small, almost non-lethal dosage of it, and it left him kind of fucked up looking like, you know, a, a lightweight version of the Joker. Um, Guillotina was one character. Um, the uh, naming of uh, Virgil's school after uh, Dwayne McDuffie is another thing. And the inclusion of hardware and the future inclusion of other milestone characters. These were things that Rosam was trying to build up to. And fucking McDaniel and uh, Richards were like, yeah, no, that doesn't sound super cool. You know what I mean? We have better ideas. Which turned out to not really be better ideas. And it's weird, too, because if you read the blog where he explains, where Rosam explains why he was fired... You, you notice that he kind of, he's trying to put sugar on top of this whole thing, you know? Kind of trying to express how frustrated he was, but at the same time trying to soften the blow. But he needs to just be straightforward. But I understand you need to save your job, you know, and your place as a writer. You don't want to get blacklisted. But it's, it's unfair for these people to be that stupid when it comes to uh, creating a comic, which is supposed to be something that we enjoy. And then, you know, it, it, it just, oh, I, I don't know, man. It, it, comics are supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something we enjoy. It's supposed to be something that isn't supposed to be held down by these stupid things because imagination rules here. And then you have these idiots holding it down to the point where it just can't elevate. It can't do the things that you set out to do with a comic. Um, Rosam keeps on saying that these guys are dedicated to making the best book they could possibly make, but that's a contradiction if something as simple as elevating this milestone character, you know, the, one of the black comic book heroes from that, that time when DC had its, the separate 
black DC comics. You know what I mean? Quote unquote. Milestone. You get this character left over from that universe and, and you, you see this opportunity for that universe to come back and to even pay tribute to one of the best writers in the industry who only happens to be black. And then they shoot it down. They systematically fuck it up. And then this dude is saying it's it's they, they were dedicated to making the best book they could make and he might have gotten in the way. I don't buy it. Honestly, I think Mr. Rosam was dedicated to making the best book that could be made as using static and they fucked it up. So, you know, it really sucks to see this happen in this day and age and it would be really nice for someone else to see this to pick up the fumbled ball and put this game this whole game back on track and for us to see static get to the point that he could get to because we know he's a popular enough character we know he can carry a book he's interesting enough to have been put in justice league unlimited to have his own tv show i don't see why they couldn't do it now you know and all of this is coming from someone who is not a fan i'm just pointing out the facts as i see it you know the part about the racist part to me that this is my opinion based on the facts that are in front of me so I don't know. I do know that it's not a coincidence because, you know, I've pointed out past iterations of this happening. And I mentioned this about Mr. Terrific's book because it sucked because there was no life in it. I mentioned this about the Blade anime, which I'm still getting shit for, even though all the facts are there. And, you know, here we go with another more recent example of the mistreatment of minority characters in comics. So I don't know what else to tell you, you know? Anyway, that's it for me, all right? Peace, guys.